Our next speaker is Dr. Tina van Verven from the Utrecht University, where she works in the large animal practice. Um, she has a, a PhD, which is done on E. coli mastitis, and she's going to talk about efficacy of topical treatment of other cleft der dermatitis. So, over to you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm happy that I get the possibility to share the results of the clinical trial that we did on uh, the topical treatment of other cleft dermatitis. Um, just a short introduction. Um, because I don't know if the disease is known in all the countries that are visiting here this Congress. Uh, other cleft dermatitis, that's a kind of skin lesion between uh, the two front quarters or um, between the two front quarters and the abdominal wall. Uh, and we've seen it for the last eight or ten years. It doesn't mean that it wasn't there before, but the last ten years we paid more attention to a disease like that. Um, we see it predominantly in, uh, in high-producing dairy farms. Um, and what, what is very characteristic for this disease is that it has a very severe chronic character. Um, till so far, we don't know anything about the etiology. There are some hypotheses um, based on bedding material or should be correlated uh, to digital dermatitis, but till so far, we don't know exactly the etiology of it. Uh, in former studies that we've done in the Netherlands, but also in other countries like Sweden, we have a, a mean prevalence that varies between 0 and 38%. And the incidence rate of the longitudinal study that we did uh, two years ago was 1.94 per 100 cow weeks at risk. Uh, medium observed time, and that's already uh, say something about the uh, duration of the disease, was 16 weeks. Uh, until so far, there's no proven therapy. So um, we distinguish two different types of UCD, or not to confuse it with the uh, University College of Dublin. I saw the big signs already this morning, which is called also UCD, but I'm talking here about UCD, about the cleft dermatitis. But we distinguish the mild and the more severe cases. The mild cases have several different signs, or they can have different signs, like crust, sebum, transudate, erythema, all kinds of different things. But the main thing is that the skin is still intact, so there's no wound. Um, and if we compare it to the severe case of UCD, uh, we see that the integrity of the skin is disrupted, uh, and that we're speaking of a wound. So, um, just a small example of the UCD. What you can see here is all kinds of sebum and crust, uh, but the skin is still intact. And if we compare it to a severe case, might be hard with the lights here, but um, you see here that the skin is disrupted. We see here already some granulation tissue. Uh, so it's a, it's a quite different uh, character, the severe and the uh, mild cases. So the objective of the study was that we would like to, uh, to do a clinical trial to two different topical treatments, one for the mild and one for the severe UCD. Um, and we did it in a randomized clinical trial that was um, at, at, um, examined at eight dairy herds, and they were selected based on a high prevalence of UCD because we needed a lot of cases to do that clinical trial. Um, we decided that we should uh, visit them uh, during a period of 12 weeks, which was based on, uh, on the d duration of the mild cases that we knew from a former study. Um, and at the first visit, all present cows were inspected. And as soon as they uh, showed any signs of UCD, we took a picture of them uh, through a mirror. I will show you the, the picture later on. Uh, we, we put the identification of the cow on the ruler that was in the picture as well, so we knew exactly which cow had which kind of disease. Then the photos were sent by email to an external expert, uh, and she didn't know which cows were treated or not treated. Um, and we decided to do different treatments in different groups for the mild and the severe cases because it looks, well, they're, they're just different types of lesions. Uh, so this is the mirror, what you can see here. So this is what we put uh, under the cow, under the memory gland. Here is the uh, camera. So what we actually did was taking a picture through the, through the mirror. Um, and what you can see here is 
uh, how it looks like. So we spread the mammary gland, we uh, took away all the dust and, uh, and made it clean, and then finally we take the picture here through the mirror. Um, we also decided to do randomization by herd. So uh, we did a randomization uh, divided for the... Oh, I'm sorry. Divided for the mild cases and the severe cases. Uh, for both groups, we had a treatment and a control group. And since there was no proven therapy, the control was just doing nothing, which was approved by the ethical uh, committee because there was no, uh, no alternative for treatment. Um, so how did we uh, carry out the treatments? Uh, all the treatments were done during milking by the farmer itself. Uh, the first time we went into the milking parlor and we removed all the crust, we cleaned the wounds, and we, uh, we identified the cows that were in the, in the treatment groups. The control animals were not identified because they didn't need any treatment, so the farmer didn't, uh, know, did not have to know which cows were controls. They only had to treat uh, the treatment groups. The cows had different legs, so the farmer knew this is a mild case and this is a severe case, so he should use different treatments. Well, the mild cases, they were treated uh, every other day with a very small foam, uh, which should prevent the skin from rupture. Uh, so it was a kind of protection against humid and manure and urine. Uh, and the severe cases were um, treated with Botop, which is um, an, an alginate, it's an enzymic system that is uh, hydrated in, an, uh, in alginate, and those um, severe cases were treated every day, and it should improve uh, wound healing, so it's a wound he healing uh, product. So there were different outcome uh, definitions. If they were cured, well, that means that there were no signs of UCD left anymore, or not cured, that's clear as well. But there could also be improvement, which means that the small cases, less than five centimeters, were changed into mild, of the very large cases, longer than five centimeters of a lesion, turned into the smaller ones, uh, less than five centimeters, or they be could become even worse, and that means if they went from mild into severe or from a small into a larger wound. So uh, we also made a difference between the severe cases in the small and in the longer cases because it takes just more time to heal long wounds. So this is an overview of the, uh, of the randomization. Uh, in total, we had 206 cases of UCD divided over 113 in mild cases, divided between the control and the treatment group, and we had less than 5 centimeters, uh, 47 cows, and in the longer group it were 46, and they were also divided over the treatment and the controls. Well, this is a, a photograph series within that, those 12 weeks of the mild cases. Uh, so what you can see here is that it, uh, this is the way how we took the pictures. Uh, and they were going in this way. And we see that they uh, were healed very well after the treatment period. Uh, if we look at the severe cases, uh, we see that they... Oh, no we see that they are cured somewhere, although they were not cured for 100% because a period of 12 weeks was uh, too short to, to show uh, for 100% um, um, cure of the total wound. So if we show to the figures of the, uh, of the results, um, for the mild cases, what we see here is the cured between the treated and the controls, there was no difference, and also the cases that didn't cure didn't show any, uh, any significant difference between the, the treated animals and the control animals. Uh, whereas, as we look to the severe cases, um, what we saw was that there was the small ones, we saw 30.6% cured against the 28 for the treated ones, um, and we saw an improvement in the control of 4.5% against 32% of the cows that were treated, which was very good. And if we look to the longer ones, so the case is more than 5 centimeters uh, cure, there was no difference. But if we looked at the uh, improvement, so that means going from a large one 
to a wound smaller than five centimeters, we saw, we saw a big difference uh, in the control group of 4.7% to 36% um, to the treatment group. So uh, both treatment groups were uh, st uh, statistically significant. So if we put all these severe cases together, as is what we did here in this graph, uh, what we can see is that as well improvement uh, as the cured um, show very good results for the severe cases. Um, which is funny because officially we, we started with this clinical trial to show effect of the mild cases because mild cases are the, the first cases um, where it starts most of the time and then it goes over into the severe cases. So the hypothesis was that let's start to cure the mild cases so we can prevent that they become worse and and end into um, severe cases. Um, but this trial showed more effect for the severe cases than for the mild cases, um, which might have to do with the size of the treatment for the mild cases. As I told you before, it was a small foam, which was one by one centimeter. Um, well, on average, the Dutch farmer hands are pretty big, so it will be very hard for them uh, to, to have a treatment foam from one to one centimeter, uh, especially when the wound is very far in front of the, um, between the two front quarters and the abdominal wall. So um, that might be part of the poor results of the milled uh, cases. On the other hand, uh, we were surprised by the very good cases for the severe uh, case, um, UCD. Um, until so far, it looks like it's, it's the first treatment that shows that it works. Uh, and for sure, not all the animals were cured just because of a treatment period of 12 weeks is not enough to get a cure of 100%. Um, nevertheless, we still don't know, understand why healthy cows that are producing 40 or 50 or 35 kilograms milk per cow per day have such a delayed uh, wound healing, which is Another question uh, in which we hope to get some answers the next, uh, the next years. So finally, I would ask uh, the Dutch Dairy Board and all the farmers that um, give us the possibility to use their cows, and um, we hope to have better treatment for the animals the next few years. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Tina. So any, anyone with any questions, could you make your way to a microphone? Antonio Barberio from Italy. Uh, the first question is, how many mild cases uh, evolved in severe cases during your study? Because usually what we saw in clinics that many times they start like mild and then they go to severe cases. And if the case that uh, in which you see an improvement at the end of the therapy, they went back again uh, to uh, severe cases again. This is one of the other problems of this disease, that the time we try to make some therapy, they improve and then they went back. Yes. Um, if, uh, the first question was, do, do you want to know the difference between the mild and the severe uh, cases per herd? The evolution of the mild cases. If uh, uh, some mild cases uh, go, uh, went to severe cases during the trials. Yeah, that, that were the cases that became worse instead of okay. uh, had a steady state. Uh, and some developed from mild to severe, but not all of them. And your second question is following cows over time. Uh, as I told you, we only followed them for 12 weeks. Uh, yeah, so we didn't see a lot of cows that were cured and fall back into new cases again. But that's, I think, because 12 weeks is not long enough to see what happens. Maybe the next lactation or after the next dry period. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Another question. Um, Jorge Venegas from the United yeah. States. Um, if, okay. um, do you, when you collect all this information, did you gather any data about uh, days in milk when those mild cases were uh, lactation, uh, type of bedding in the farms, any type of, uh, to get a risk assessment of no. where maybe those cases were occurring? That's my first question. My second question is any uh, risk of uh, residues with the use on milk and with the use of any of any of those two products? Good question. Um, what we, um, your first question was? 
<laughs> Don't risk a Sorry, it was a good you, one, but yeah, if you collect assessment. any additional information from oh, yeah. the cow, yes, we, were, we randomized for lactation states uh, and days in milk. So that was the, the the way of the randomization that we did on the farm, which worked out very well. Um, and we didn't look for risk assessment because we there were only eight herds included, and we've done. Uh, studies before with the Animal Health Center in, uh, in Deventer as well. So that was not the aim of the study because 8 hertz is not enough to, to do anything on, on uh, risk assessment. Your second question about residues into milk, both uh, treatments don't uh, um, have any antibiotics in it, so there's no problem at all for, uh, for using them in, in milking cows. And that's because we did former studies and we, we couldn't find causing microorganisms, so that's why we stepped away from treatment with antimicrobials, because we don't believe that bacteria are the main cause of this disease, it's a delayed wound healing process. So what we did here is try to make the, 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 the environment of the wound more beneficial for the cow so she can heal her own wound. So that's the idea. Okay, so I think someone at the back first, sorry, I think it's someone at the back first and then you Sorry, hi, I'm Child from Germany. I was just, I'm over here. Oh yes, it's very hard <laughs> um, to see you. You answered just one question that you said, you don't think that any bacteria are involved there. Um, there was a lameness conference in international one um, in Valdivia, and um, there was the question whether treponemes could um, also play a role in that, and have you got any information about the presence of digital dermatitis on the dairy farms that you worked with? Well, there was a former study in the, in the Netherlands on 20 hertz when we first started a few years ago with, uh, with, with looking for prevalence of uh, UCD. Um, but till so far, well, indeed, there are farms that have digital dermatitis and UCD, but we also see it the opposite way around. And the, in the research that we did on the microorganisms, we could find anything. Uh, we did it from slaughter material, we took biopsies from just cows alive, um, and, and we found all the bacteria that were there, but, but no any one that was specifically um, that could be the causative or, uh, agent of this disease. Especially in the deep holes and wounds, we, we found a lot of anaerobic microorganisms, which is the question, is that the cause or, or the effect of being that high in, in those um, uh, okay. deep wounds? Okay, our last question here. Francesco Testa from Italy. I understand that there were no antibiotics in these products, but I would not like to drink milk with, uh, for example, anti-inflammatory uh, molecules or something else. So I would like to understand if there were or there were not withdrawal periods for, this, for no. the use of these products. No, there's no withdrawal period. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay thank you very much, Tina. And, our, and uh, could I ask you to give her a round of applause? Our next speaker is Dr. Mark Bryan from New Zealand. From um, he's the managing director of Vet South. Of Vet